Do you read? No. Do you read when you're growing up? Yes. What did you read? Uh, just the classics, the 13 story treehouse books, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Mm -hmm. I've read all the Harry Potters and that concludes the list. What happened? I just lost interest in it. Like, I can't really be bothered, it takes too much time. Jacob was not alone, in fact. In my documentary, more than half of them told me that they had a very similar experience. They loved reading as a kid, and then, at some point during their teenager years, usually after year seven, they stopped reading. As this documentary, Panel Up, aims to film them every seven years to track their lives. Imagine having more than 80 participants in this documentary. What makes the difference for people who read and those who don't? One of my biggest excitements is to find out in the future what kind of influence reading might have on their future lives. And now, here is a preview of what they are now. Um, do you read? Yes. What do you read? Anything. What do you read at the moment, recently? Right now, mm. I'm reading Lord of the Flies. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Haven't read in high school? No. Okay. No, I started like reading it and then I was like, oh, I read that in primary school. And my dad was like, oh, I read that in primary school. Mm. I still want to read it. Mm. What else? Um, what kind of books do you like to read? I'm not that fussy, to be honest. Mm. I just kind of, I just look for a book. If it sounds interesting, I'll read it. Mm. But I always want to be reading something, like, I read every morning, like, when it's the first thing I do when I get up, I read for like half an hour. Is that a routine? Every day, yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know, I just find new books, like, like recently I've wanted to read a lot of the, like, classics. Okay. Just, because, I don't know, that was the one thing I liked about English in school, was reading the books. They mm. were always pretty interesting mm. and I was like well maybe I should try read some more of those kind of classic ones that we read in school mm. so that's, I've been working my way through those um otherwise I feel like I read a lot of like the dystopias like Hunger Games mm. and those kind of books because okay. my mom obsessed over them even though they're like young adult and she was reading them as an adult mm. she just like loved them and she's like you have to read this <laughs> So, I read a lot of those, but I'm not really fussing. What else book did you enjoy that you remembered? I enjoyed The Giver. The Giver? Um, I, I really liked 1984. Oh, did you? Yeah. I actually listened to that as an audiobook though, mm. while I was doing my HSC major work. Mm. That was a really good opportunity to listen. I listened to quite a few books doing that major work. Mm. What else did you read during the high school major work? I did. I read Fahrenheit 451 mm. and The Picture of Dorian Gray. Mm. Which I like both of them as well. They're okay. really good. Who's, who's your favorite author? Favorite author? Mm. All authors that you like. I don't know. I don't know. Oscar Wilde. Really... Oscar Wilde. Do you like? Have you ever yeah. read on other other works, plays? No, I feel like I don't really like stick to authors. Mm, that's okay. I just go anywhere. It doesn't matter who wrote it. Any French literature? French. Mm. Not that I know of. Charles Dickens. No. Mm. Not yet. Um, Jane Austen. I want to read 
some Jane Austen, but I haven't got around to it yet. They're pretty hard to read, mm. right? I, I know there's one called Emma, mm. and I have that because mm. I was like, you have to have a copy. <laughs> so I feel like one day I should read it. Okay. But no, I haven't actually read any Jane Austen yet. What about the Shakespeare? Do you enjoy Shakespeare? Sometimes. Which play is the favorite? Hmm, I like the Othello. Okay. But I really did not like the Tempest that we oh, did in year really? 12. That was bad. What, what else did you study? Shakespeare. What else did you study? Romeo and Juliet. I'm pretty sure you studied that one. Romeo, hmm? Romeo and Juliet. You must have studied that one. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Mm. I think it was good. But I feel like everyone knows that story already. It's kind of like... Well, it's different when you read it play, actually. Yeah. I know, but... Yeah, I mean, it was good. How about um, Great Gatsby? I like The Great Gatsby. Okay. Mm. I liked reading that. Um, even though it was a bit hard at first because mm. we just started lockdown and they hadn't given us the book, so we had to read it on our computer oh. in this web page. And I was like, mm. it was not happening for me. I could mm. not get through it. I was so behind. Mm. And then we finally, we finally went back and we got our copies, and mm. I enjoyed it a lot more. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, what's the hardest book you read? What do you mean by hardest? The most difficult book you read. It's difficult to go through. Um, it's just hard, it's difficult to comprehend. Mm. Hmm. I feel like the picture of Dorian Gray was pretty hard. Mm. It was like, I don't know, it's confronting. Mm. Because it just was awful. Like the whole thing, like mm. about how much, you know, going through life in that way can like affect who you are. Mm how much that builds up and how people can be so like vain and want that yeah i don't it was just really hard to to think about it was very much something i hadn't thought a lot about before mm, okay must be also a pretty interesting experience as well at some point yeah, it was a very interesting book. I, I really, really interested in it. And great imagination. Okay, do you think the feelings that Romeo and Juliet had each other, you can call them love? Yes. Okay, even though they are really young, and they didn't really spend enough time to know each other? Does that matter? Oh, okay. Do you... I mean... Yeah, go on. I mean... Obviously, like, to start off with, mm -hmm. you're not going to know the person. Mm -hmm. And I think you can, you can know to start off with. I mean, not everyone's going to know to start off with, mm -hmm. but I think you can. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it's not like the, like, the love in Romeo and Juliet, it never really got, it never developed. Mm -hmm. So I guess in that way, you could say it was really love. It was just like first attractions, mm. whatever. But I don't know. Sometimes you can just know, like you can just you don't have to be around a person for that long to feel like you just know them, know things about them that maybe they don't even know. They die for each other. Yeah, so something must have been going good. <laughs> well, how obviously about, terrible in the end. But. Yeah. Um, how about the... Do you think Daisy ever loved Gatsby? No. No, never. I hate Daisy, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was so awful though. Mm. Daisy. I... 
I mean, I guess there's an argument that that she probably like she could have maybe loved him in the beginning mm. because you know he didn't have all the the money and stuff that mm. drew her to like Tom mm. in the end. Yeah. So I guess in that way maybe she did, but in the end I don't think like she loved him. No, or she wouldn't have done that. What she did in the end. What about when she received a letter from the guest before the wedding? She read the wedding, cried, and you know, went home. She wanted to cancel the wedding. La la la. That do you think she wasn't sincere then? Not that she wasn't sincere, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I feel like she was someone who would kind of like the drama of it. In a way, <laughs> and like, kind of like the attention of like, <coughs> oh, this guy like, wants to marry me. Mm. Oh, this guy, he still loves me mm. from all that years ago. Mm. But I don't know. Just the way, the way it happened in the end, that she just went on with her life. Mm. That's harsh. Okay. You probably. Do hate Daisy <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I think I'm a little biased. No, it's so far no problem. It's, everyone has bias. You can't, <laughs> you, can't, you can't control their feelings, right? The feeling is real. Um, how about the feelings, the Gatsby towards Daisy? Because what they, the Gatsby, you know, loved about her is not even real. Like it was sort of like a vague image, the green light there. That's mm. it, it's kind of fantasy. In his mind, Do you, can you call that love as well? Okay, <laughs> I mean, I definitely thought Gatsby was a little bit more sincere. Mm. A little bit more than Daisy was. <laughs> mm. Yeah, like obviously he built up this image of her that was what he kind of wanted her to be mm. and she kind of became a status symbol like he wanted to achieve that kind of status mm. but I think he really did care about her in the end and like when he got her back it seemed to really fulfill him in a way mm. more than it didn't really seem to fulfill Daisy all that much mm. even though oh yeah and he he did sacrifice in the end for her mm. but I don't know if it was a sacrifice for like this Daisy that he invented of like all those years of like pining after her or if it was the real Daisy but Sacrifice for one of them. Mm. Do, you think, <laughs> do you think that feeling that Gatsby had for Daisy was something close to love? True love? Or not? Not true love, I don't think. Okay, interesting. I mean, he did a lot for her. Mm -hmm. He died for her. In a he way. did, yeah. in a way, die yeah. for her. Mm. But I mean, he invested like a whole lot of his life in someone who Not I don't even think real. was. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't even real. It was like who he wanted her to be. Mm. So I don't know. He wasn't in love. With Daisy, he was in love with this person he created in his mind of mm. who Daisy was, mm. and like that person loved him back in his head. Okay. But I mean, Daisy never did, and I feel like yeah, he was devoted, but it wasn't really love because it wasn't. Anything between them. Do you read? 
Yes. What do you read? Currently, mm. The Alchemist. Alchemist, what is it about? The Alchemist is about how to find mm. something that you're destined to do. Okay. By Paul, Paulo Cahello. How do we find what we're destined to do? You don't stop trying. Mm. You don't stop trying mm. and you don't give up mm. and you don't stop trying. Okay. Um, there's a... There was, an, there was an artist, I mm. thought, I'm not, exactly not sure what his name was, but there was an artist in Italy mm. who didn't sell a single painting mm. until she was 84. Mm. Sounds like me. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um, what else did you read growing up? Growing up, mm. uh, Harry Potter, mm. The Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Mm. Um, just normal stuff but you know it's interesting nowadays I think about it Diary of the Wimpy Kid is the most useless novel ever oh really it doesn't teach you anything I've the amount of stuff I've learned from <clears throat> books and the, genuinely the power of books that I've realised now is, mm. is incredible and mm. when you give a kid something like the Diary of the Wimpy Kid or the the biography of James Tedesco mm. it's, it's useless did you enjoy reading though back then? yes yeah, I think that's the whole point, maybe. Yes, just, maybe. Maybe just enjoyment, hey? Get, getting into the reading, yeah. the habit of reading. Yeah. Um, so when did you, what kind of, else growing up, high school, what did you study for English? Uh, how do you mean? What, what kind of text did you study at high school, in high school? Oh, honestly, mm. I'll, give, I'll give New South Wales this. The text that we studied in high school was very good. Okay. The Mice and Men, mm. of Mice and Men. Yeah, yeah so good really? that is one of the books I, you know I bought it afterwards oh, I, really? like very rarely I buy books because mm. I get given books but mm. I bought that book mm. um, The Great Gatsby mm. just the writing is so incredible mm. um, there was a teacher in my high school you know her Miss Bell mm. she got me back into reading okay. I, I was not I stopped reading in year 5 okay. oh, wow. um, throughout high school I didn't read until year 9 I had mm. Miss Bell for year 9 what did she do? She had a book corner. It was incredible. Yeah. She had a little book library mm. in the classroom yeah. with bean bags. Yeah. There was a screen yeah. and she would put up book of the week, yeah. recommendations. Mm. The, the books were in genres. Mm. You know, we did 10 minutes of reading just mm. because, not even because we had to. We did 10 minutes of reading every, every class. Mm. She was like, let's just read. Mm. It, was, it was sick. And yeah. if you didn't want to read, you didn't have to. You could just take a 10 minute nap. Mm. It was awesome. It was so good. And she got me back into reading and then she got pregnant and she left school and I stopped reading. Because oh. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Of Mice my, what's the, what's the name? Uh, of Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men, okay. Tell me why, what's so good about it. Oh, it's just, it's so <laughs> real. Hmm. Like, what's um, real? The, the fact that it, so the Mice, you, I've read uh, it. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. Mm. So for anyone who doesn't know, it, it shows how someone who is autistic, mm. who, someone who we think they don't see the world as as we do we mm. think they don't understand we mm. think they don't they don't have the ability to understand they mm. they do and they do it much better mm. you know they see things in such better clearer ways mm. and like i don't want to ruin the ending for anyone no, but the ending is yeah. just how does that happen why why, why do you what's so, so fascinating about ending how, how did you make you feel because like it felt me i felt betrayed i felt sad i was really sad with that ending of the person passing away, I was like, "Why? Why do you feel betrayed? Do you don't you think that that's probably because I was attached? I was attached to him. Don't you reckon that's probably the best ending for him? What else <sighs> do you want him to bring him to the prison and then beaten up by the people, get bullied, help him escape, help him How? go, and then he's not gonna survive alone in, in I this don't know. world? Yeah, probably. Yeah, but, but the, uh, yeah, but that was like the only book that made me attached to a character. Mm. I was so attached, and I I remember exactly. Mm. The day we were reading it in classroom, mm. we were going through it, and then I, I, I flip over the page, and I'm like, <laughs> no! Yeah. And we read it, I was like, genuinely, it wasn't just me. Mm. People in the classroom were shocked. Yeah. We were deflated, we were like, w what now? It was incredible, incredible book. Definitely read it. Mm. Any book that you think it changed your life? Of Mice and Men. Yeah. Um, Do you think that, that book changed your life? Yes. What, in what way? Um, in the way of just, you know what he taught me? Mm. Your own blood can literally kill you. Like your own 
family can be the one reason that you live or die. You live or die. Come on, that brother was helping him. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm. but again, mm. your family has the power mm. to kill you or keep you alive. Mm. Wow. But it also taught me that mm. some decisions, as bad as they may seem, mm. might be the best ones. Absolutely. The brother loved him. Yeah. All his heart, whole yeah. life. Yeah. He's ready to sacrifice, dirty himself on the hand. Yeah. To save his brother from this this dirty world. Yeah. That is not part of. It's just not belong to him. Yeah. That, that's beautiful, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then another book that might have changed my life. I I, I don't actually remember the name. I mm. this I read this in year twelve. Mm. Um, but it's like a, I think the devil as your boss. Mm. And it tells you how to be a business like owner. Oh. How, tells you how to be a boss. Was that the English standard? No, 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 I didn't read it from school. Oh. I, that that was just a time period oh, I read it. Okay. Um, but it tells you how to be a boss mm. with the devil's power. Okay. What I mean is, what's the devil most like famous mm. for? Mm. Manipulation. Yeah, yeah. And it's to tell you how to be a boss and how to be how to manage people <coughs> Christian no you know, it's incredible it's incredible how oh Christian <laughs> oh to be honest it doesn't talk about the devil I know, I know. Um, okay. but it it's just the power of manipulation mm. is crazy once you get it down like you can get people to do some things like this mm. Okay. Mm. Right. did you like Shakespeare no couldn't care less oh really Oh, you like the Great Gatsby? Yes. What about the Great Gatsby you like? What about do I, what about it do I like? Yeah, what about the To be honest, the Great Gatsby, the story wasn't that fascinating for me, but mm. the Great Gatsby, what I remember about it was the writing. Mm. Okay. How it was read. Mm. You know, um just oh. do, do you still read literature? Sorry? Do you still read any literature book? No. Classical literature? Okay. I haven't, haven't read it in a long time. Mm. Uh, Alchemist is like my first book that I've picked up for a long time and yeah. I heard actually you read quite a lot when you were primary school kid. I was, I was literally the reader. Like my teachers would give me books that they recommended and I'd be like, thank you, I'll read this and I'll bring it back to you at the end of the week. I wish I did that still. <laughs> what happened? Oh, oh. Wait, yeah, go on, let's, let's what happened? I, um, I still read a lot in year seven. Um, I would, Go to the library, get a book, return it, and get another one, you know? And that was sort of, I did that in primary school, and like to me now that's like a little bit crazy, which, um, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I wish I could get back into reading, and I think I will, um, but I have to start small. Um, but yeah, I think, like in English class, we have silent reading, and that was good to, like, you know, get me to continue, like, uh, borrowing library books and things like that um, but I, I don't really know how it all stopped because <laughs> I remember that, like one of the last books I read I really enjoyed it and then I didn't read it, anything after that um, what was it? <laughs> it was like um, uh, it was just like a silly little like romantic fiction princess dystopian book anyway <laughs> it's the selection series if you're in my friend group you probably know what I'm talking about it was a good book series um, and then I just like stopped reading I don't know why um, but yeah um, I I definitely miss it though uh, I think my vocabulary is quite small now um, like especially when I'm like in comparison to Taylor who like stopped reading like way later than I did um, I think she doesn't really read much anymore um, uh, like when I'll be like reading one of her essays and be like wow this is crazy how do you know all these words um, so like reading is like definitely like a good hobby to pick back up but yeah it just stopped and then it didn't start again. When did you stop? I think about um, year nine, end of year nine. Um, and then I would just read whatever books we had to read for class and that would be like it. Do you read? Yes. What kind of book do you read? I tend not to read books, but I tend to, I like to read Latin quotes. Latin from time quotes. To, yeah, time to time from Latin philosophers. Mm -hmm. um, but no, <laughs> they're translated. I also um, 
I used to read a, a few books, but they were mainly fiction. Sometimes I'll read like automotive handbooks as well, um, manuals, things like that, learn specifications. I'll also, I'll also read, you know, um, research articles about the planet, about trends um, to do with climate, um, to do with vehicles, purchasing habits, things like that. What, what, what kind of fiction did you read growing up? Um, one of the ones that stood out was the Ranger's Apprentice series. It was a medieval fantasy mm -hmm. based, I think, in the 1500s in a European country. Mm -hmm. And it was about a boy who grew up with no parents, didn't know his parents and was always, you know, underdeveloped, a bit scrawny. But he was mentored by a ranger and rangers are archers mm -hmm. and he was taught how to be, be strong, you know, how to wield a bow, mm -hmm. how to progress and, you know, live by himself. They're like solitary people. And I think that is quite actually, actually aligns quite well with, you know, how I think mm. now that I look back. See, yeah. that's a connection that I've just made. Yeah. Um, which is why I think that this interview is a very beneficial experience for everyone who does it. Yeah. I would recommend it to anyone. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what is the most difficult book you ever read? Ooh. Probably Fahrenheit 451 when I was in high school. It wasn't difficult from a literary sense, but it was difficult in the ideology sense. It was a dystopian future book mm -hmm. um, based in a controlling government society where you know, you, you're not allowed books, you have to watch the TV, you're not allowed to do anything but mm -hmm. except watch the TV. And th that idea of a dystopian future is very hard for me mm -hmm. because I really dislike some of the ideas that were presented in it, like the amount of control, the amount of the lack of diversity mm. that was present, mm. um, the narrow-mindedness of all the fictional characters in the novel, you know. Um, I like when minds are complex, when people are complex, when life, you know, has, has colour and complexity to it and is not just singularly faceted into one action. Mm. That, that would probably be the more, most difficult book that I've read. Mm. Who was the English teacher? Um, oh, I forgot her name. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll cut this part she, she, she left the school after she taught my year 12 class. Hmm. Oh, no. Was it a young teacher? No, no, she was older. Hmm. I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> she was very impactful on how I, I viewed English. Because oh, really? prior to her class, I yeah. was actually, I didn't like um, English. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't see any meaning in it. Yeah. But once I graduated, I, I went full circle, you know. Yeah. I, I started pursuing the ideas that were found in text. I started analyzing texts, like unironically, you know, I used to <laughs> used to hate it in high school. It's like, all oh, the curtains are green, this and that. Yeah. But now I actually start looking for imagery in certain pieces of text and making those connections in myself. And maybe that's a sign that I've matured yeah. and she had that impact on me, you know? And you don't remember her name. <laughs> uh, it'll come to me if I think right. about it more. You text um, me when you remember her, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll send you a message, but you know, I, I do, okay. if she ever does see it, I want her to know that she had a massive impact on yeah. how I think. Mm. And I don't know if she knows it or not, but mm. yeah, it was, it, sure it, it took her two years, but she, she got through to me. So was it after your graduation? Or? Just before, like uh, during trials, the connection was made and, and um, I think she might have noticed it, but I never fully admitted it. That is a beautiful story. I love it. Yep. Because even some people in documentary, they think like English, like a bullshit plus bullshit equals bullshit. Like that's how they think. That's you know? how I used to think. I know <laughs> that's, that's what I, I viewed the subject as. But once I, I opened my eyes and took the time to actually understand, it, 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 it started making sense. And there was right. actual mm, now, of knowledge. I am super intrigued about this topic. Okay. Yep. Right. Let's talk about then, uh, which English course did you take? Was it extended? I did standard. 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 Because, oh. you know, I didn't like English. So oh. I thought I'll just do standard. And um, I don't regret the decision, but I think I could have done um, advanced, yeah, yeah. but I did standard. Tell me about um, the text that you studied uh, during the... Experience. So I remember Billy Elliot yeah. and Fahrenheit 451. Mm -hmm. um, Billy Elliot, in hindsight, was a pretty good movie. Very good. Very good movie. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from that, um, especially with how music works with film mm -hmm. as a literary technique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how um, the visual techniques of dancing with the music can mm -hmm. actually convey meaning. Yeah. Um, what? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah um and then we did study um just other pres prescribed short texts mm. um and just how to quickly analyze short tes texts um on the spot which is part of the hsc mm. so that was english standard yeah and it's shakespeare um i think we did something i think in year 11 we spent some time on a little bit of old English. Yeah. Um, I forget the actual text we studied. Oh, we also did um, what's it called? Sherlock Holmes at one yeah. stage as well. Mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Right. I just want to know the transition that she did to you. Can you describe a little bit more how she changed your perspective on English and literature text? I just went into it thinking that there was no real connection. I just used to think, oh yeah, maths and physics is mm. is factual. You know, there's mm. there's no nothing to be learned from English. But mm. over time, she just kept, I guess, drilling it into me. She was very persistent, mm. um, and over time, I think she wore me wore my wore my my barrier down, mm. and I was able to peek through the hole she made in the barrier, mm. and then break the rest of the wall down myself. Wow. You know, and then eventually climb through the hole that I made. Do you read? I do read. I read a lot. I'm reading a book right now. <laughs> Finally, find someone who's who read. Who really? No one else reads? Not, not so far. I'm reading A Clockwork Orange. Ah. And I, I haven't read that much, mm -hmm. but I do. Yeah. Did you, did you buy this book? I did. I did. I bought it the other day. I bought it yes. on... Uh, ah. Yep. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah. yeah. I bought it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should say. I have the receipt. I couldn't find a bookmark, so I used the receipt. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I bought it on the 7th of July. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else do you like to read? Um, I like to read... I like to read a lot of things. Mm. Um, I'm not exactly really picky. Um, I, f I just... Before this, mm. um, I was reading Lolita, mm. which was crazy. Have you read it before? Of oh it's crazy did you like it um i was like a bit taken aback i was just like what is even happening right mm -hmm. now like oh the storyline i just thought was like absolutely crazy but i like the way that it was written what what made you read lolita um oh i don't know i had just like it's like a classic and so i was like, like why lolita um well i mean i don't know like it's a classic so i was like what what about lolita is so good that makes it a classic where did you Hmm? Where did you get it? Um, oh, my parents gave it to me oh. for Christmas. I had it like on a on no a. parents. My God. I don't think I don't think they knew what it was about. Really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Yeah, I just had like a a wish list of like a bunch of books that okay. I wanted, mm -hmm. and then I was like, okay. "There you go." Right. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me more about it. Um, I thought, I thought like Humbert. As a character, he was just, he was crazy. I don't, I mean, he was so like fully aware of like how the things that he was doing were wrong, mm. but he was also trying to justify them at the same time. And I was like, I don't know. It was just, it just seemed very crazy to me. Mm. And um, yeah, him was like a character. I was like, man. Do you think there was a love? Like between him and mm. Lolita, mm. I think his his emotion, his feelings for the yeah. Lolita. Do you think that was love? I think he thinks mm. that it's love. Mm. I don't think that. I think it was more just obsession. I also think that he was just like projecting. Oh, what was the name of you know the Do girl you know, at the know. at the start of the book yeah. like his first love mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. um the where they were like at the beach together and mm -hmm. like during his childhood like his mm -hmm. childhood love he was definitely like projecting that mm -hmm. onto Lolita mm -hmm. the lore is mm -hmm. um yeah i it's just crazy it I wouldn't call it a love like I wouldn't call it a romance novel. Mm. Most definitely not. Mm. Um, what what do you think Nabokov was trying to, to describe in through this book? What what was your take? What did you take from this book? Um 
I definitely got vibes of like obsession and just like I think he just like kind of like Macbeth the way he just like kept doing things and things just kept escalating mm -hmm. and then it was kind of like a the end justifies the mean mm -hmm. kind of a thing I don't know I didn't really I didn't really have too much of an analysis of it mm -hmm. um but yeah I just like I I can see why this was like such a popular book like why, it, why do you think it's such a popular book yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just thought that it was yeah it was pretty crazy I also liked um how he would like talk to the reader mm -hmm. Like, he would just be like, oh, you're probably judging me right now. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think I, I kind of like it when, like, book characters do that. I think it's, yeah, it's good. Like, um, in A Clockwork Orange, yeah. he actually kind of, like, talks to the reader. There's, like, a bit at mm. the start mm. where I remember this because I, I wrote about it. Mm. Um. Here we go. Yeah, there's like a lot of, you can, I guess I can show you. The, like here, there's a lot of use of like, you, you, you. And then so I was like, is he, is he talking to me? Or is he just like, you in general? I don't know. I feel like it's just like, it's nice. It makes me feel included. I, I like the little notes that they do. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I just have a lot to say. But it also means I can never lend anyone my books. Cause then... Oh no, it's all right. It's, it's good to you get you can also to see that this reader is who's trying to read. And then... mm, yeah, actually, I have a lot of like secondhand books that actually have like notes, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, and it oh. feels great. It feels great. Right? Yeah, feels I'm like, like, oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what else except uh, Lolita that you read and you enjoy it? Um, I I read like a lot of like classics. Well, I, not even that many. I have a lot of classics that are, like, to be read. Um, because I'm kind of, like, working my way through them. I definitely want to read Little Women. Um, I've seen the movie, and I love the movie. I haven't read the book, but I really want to read the book. Uh, um, I definitely want to read Little Women. Um, before this, um, I was reading another book um, called uh, A Very Nice Girl. Um, and then before... Before that, what was I reading before that? Uh, before that, I read, oh, um, Normal People, mm -hmm. which is like another, it's very popular right now, mm -hmm. which, a bit of a hot take, I didn't really is it like it. Irish Girl? One of the. Uh, well, I'm. What's, what would the authors come from again? Uh, Sally Rooney. Yeah. Yeah. Where's she from? She. I Irish? I British, think so. British, Irish, yeah. Yeah. Uh, European. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I read Normal People and then I read uh, The Song of Achilles, mm. which is also very popular right now. Mm. Everyone cried. I didn't it's cry. Um, mm. I don't know why. Mm. Um, I mean, I thought it was sad, but I didn't, I didn't cry. Um, any Jane Austen? No, I have not read any Jane which is why I want to read. <laughs> any uh, Brown Sisters? No. Oh, but I do have um, Wuthering Heights. Okay. Um yeah, that one's also to be read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. I only read like on the on the train, like okay. to and from school. Mm -hmm. I don't really. Charles Dickens. Yeah, I have I have a Charles Dickens book. I have the Pickwick Papers. Okay. Um, but I haven't read it. Any, like, literature, classic literature that you did at school that you would really enjoy as well. Oh, so many. You can tell me about it. Oh my gosh. Okay. I really, in year 12, we did um, The Crucible, Arthur Miller. I thought that it was... Crucible? It's, yeah. It's about, um, it's about the Salem witch trials. Um, and it's just kind of... Basically, Arthur Miller just wrote um, about the witch trials. But he was referencing, like... This was in the 50s with, like, the Red Scare and, like, communism. So he was just, like... He was using it as an allegory mm. for like what was happening in his real life to show people like how stupid they were by comparing oh. it to the witch trials. Oh. It's like it's like a very short book. It's actually a play. Oh, Arthur Miller. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's very good. It's a play. Okay. Yeah. Short. Is it a short book? Or? It's no. Oh, it's like really short. It's like shorter than this. Okay. All right. Mm. It's um. But I it's might have a look. Yeah. so good. Yeah, we did mm. that um in year twelve. Mm. Um, what was it teaching? Uh, Mr. Cassar. I loved Mr. Cassar. Mr. Cassar, Mr. Cassar, Mr. Cassar. Uh, classes? No. Not co oh, oh, Courtney. 
Kone, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Kone, yeah. Kone yeah, is yeah. the director. He was di- director of the film. Yeah, 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 he does. So good. Yeah. yeah, he does drama as well. Oh, I loved oh, with the castle. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, and then I also loved. Oh, uh, we did like a lot of T. S. Eliot poetry. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was really interesting. And Christian, conservative Christian, you love him. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, okay, I loved him. Like, so not all of his poems were about yeah, Christianity, yeah, yeah. but I did. I think, I think he just like. This is gonna sound so cliche, but he has a way with words. Okay, he, he, he does, he does. Um, yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, I also found Macbeth really interesting. Yeah. We did that one in like year ten, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Oh, and To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> that one was like, I we read that one in like year eight, and I was like, "This is profound." Yeah, yeah I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always loved like English mm-hmm. and like I don't know studying this kind of stuff, yeah. which is. Did you do um, Robin Juliet? Yeah, we did. You remember that? Uh, did you do Hamlet? No, oh. but we did do the Tempest. Oh, Tempest. Tempest yeah. Too. yeah, I don't know. I just I, I mean, I can get like not having the time to read, but I don't hate reading. I don't know. He never read any books. Yeah, that is a shame. Just what kind of impact a reader, a good reader, could have on their life? You know? So what do you think? Um, mm-hmm. I think I get a lot out of reading. I feel like I learn a lot of things. Mm. It, because there's like a lot of life lessons in in stories mm. that like, I don't know. I feel like I've experienced so many things that I've never actually experienced, but just because I've like read about them. Humbert, Humbert. Yeah, Humbert. Yeah, I know not to not to get with a twelve year old. Which wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Humber, yeah. Humber. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. He's teaching me things. Yeah, he's teaching me things, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like it just, it always just gives me like another perspective into something. Mm. Um, and like, even things that are, that like, about like little women. Mm. Like, you wouldn't think that like a story about like four women mm. would be like super crazy. Mm. But I mean, also I've gathered this only from watching the movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Full disclaimer on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to pretend I'm such uh, like a, <laughs> a literature yeah, yeah, god. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All good. But like, just from like watching the movies, like I can understand why Little Women was like such a success because it like it talks about like so many things. Like Joe's character, it talks about like her frustrations about like being a woman in a world where it's so hard to like have a career. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I guess that. Mm, doesn't apply nowadays. I don't know. Maybe we done a little, made a Ooh, bit of pro- progress. A little, yeah, yeah. We, we made progress. Yeah, we definitely made progress. Yeah. Um, like you know, Joe's character, she kind of encapsulates a lot about one. Um, uh, what's her name? Alcott, mm. the author. Mm. I know her last name is Alcott. Um, what she like wants to say about the world? Because I don't know. I feel like. Joe's character as an author could be a reflection mm. on the actual author who mm. was a woman. Mm. Um, and like, it also talks about like, um, like there is a dialogue between um, one of the characters, Amy, and another character, Lori, mm. about like how hard it is to make your way in life as a woman and mm. like kind of any money that like Amy would make as soon as she got married would belong to her husband mm. and um, her children wouldn't be her children, they'd be her husband's children. Um, but I don't know if that's really relevant nowadays, but I don't know. It just like, I'm getting like a lot of insight into like, wow, I, things are like pretty good for me right now as a woman, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't worry about those kinds of things. Like, I know that if I make my own money, it's my money. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just it's interesting to read and just just see things from a different perspective. Anyway, um, yeah, reading's fun. <laughs> it's 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 also it's a great great entertainment and oh yeah. It's, we, we... This is this is there's this book which I started to read. I dropped it. It's called How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Mm. It's basically Ted Kaczynski's manifesto, but it's actually published. Mm. Um, it in the entire thing is talking about is criticizing. Uh, climate pa- um, activism, pacifism, and mm. you know, encouraging um, people to take actual action and cause disruption. 
okay. and you know mail and vote by mail that's when i say vote by mail i mean mail pipe bombs to politicians <laughs> i mean shakespeare's you know really good i i like as a person who has such an influence over our even even our language is incredible i don't really read shakespeare much i've you know read macbeth um hamlet romeo and juliet the other ones i forgot about you know they're all good but honestly i think the, the plots are kind of dated by today's terms really yeah it's just oh, wow i mean for, okay it's a seinfeld of, it's, it's a seinfeld effect right it's like you know there's so many copies of a copy of a copy that you go back to the original it doesn't seem as good as it actually is you really know? Oh, yeah wow. it's a seinfeld effect it's like you know because a lot of modern comedy is based around of the framework seinfeld left behind mm. seinfeld's still really funny but you introduce new people to it and they go, man, it's just jokes I've already heard. It's like, yeah, because Seinfeld invented it. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, oh. uh, I definitely read some of them. I can't name, if, if you list some of them up, I'll tell you if I've read them. Mm. I can't, you know, that's how the human brain works. It's more prompt based than, mm. uh, you know, array, in, you know, based. Mm. It's like, can you name every soft drink you've had? No. What if I ask, have you had Fanta before? I have. Exactly. You know, I can I can ask you. I can go through every soft drink. You can tell me if you've had it or not. But I can't. You can't tell me. You can't go through a list of all of them and tell me if you've had them or not. Yeah. I would say that um, that's actually a myth. I think the younger generation reads a lot more than older generations. Okay. I mean, I don't have a study in my head to quote, but I have I have seen I have seen statistics that. I am Gen Z, but I have seen statistics that say millennials read a lot more than baby boomers, mm. and Gen Z reads more than than millennials. And everything older generations complain about. Oh, really? Everything ge older generations complain about the younger generations. You know, that's as, a tale as old as time. Mm. It's actually things that are better. Mm. There's less uh, youth crime rates. There's you know, <laughs> that more people are reading. It's you know, I think it is just a myth by the older generation that young people don't read all right, or all right. read less I mean at least before TikTok <laughs> TikTok <laughs> is very distracting to the younger okay. generation they have a lot more time when they're younger mm. I mean you don't think you do when you're younger but you have a lot more time to do things like that when you're younger mm. you know once you get older you have more responsibilities more things to do more things to take care of you know and so you have less time it's like I could spend an hour reading I, or I could do this assignment I could you know do you know, it's, yeah. I could book the doctor appointment it's just a lot a, a lot more things on your mind and reading is a time consumer and you know when you read mm. there's no immediate do release of dopamine mm. you know there's you'll get like serotonin and stuff you know mm. satisfaction of I just read a book mm. cool but there's no immediate like I did something I feel good I think a lot of people still maintain a habit of, re of reading it's just when it comes to convenience, it's like I said, I'm more of a video essay person. I watch hours of video essay. The longest video essay I've ever seen is seven hours and 40 minutes. Far out, what, what? Oh, it was just about a, a UK TV show. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, I really liked it. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's just the visual medium's a lot easier to digest than one where you have to. I don't really, I don't like reading online because it's a mess to read things online. Yeah, you know, is. there's ads yeah. and. You know the page refreshes and it's like you know you lose what you track up to i like to have physical books mm -hmm. you know like i go to i go to the library very often now okay. but it's mostly to work right. um do you read any like political social science related books can you can think of like well i mean i said earlier i had to blow up a pipeline mm -hmm. um the meaning of it all is a, is a good one uh, written by one of the guys that made the uh oh. Uh, nuclear bomb. It's not Oppenheimer. It's the other one. It's Citizen Sun. Is the the meaning of it all? Thoughts on a by a citizen scientist. I think it is exactly. I don't remember much from it because I did read it a while ago. But there is one thing that's always stuck with me, and that's you know the question he asks of: Is science worth anything? Or is 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 there any value in science? And he said, and he answers it with saying, the power the the power to do something is of value. He describes the concept of keys, that the same key that can open the, you know, heaven's door, mm. opens the same, opens the gate to hell. You know, it's like, um, 
gene, uh, gene splicing and CRISPR. It's a, a gene editing thing. I'm not a geneticist, but you can use the same technology to end like genetic diseases that kill people really early at age, but you can also use it to make designer babies and, you know, make anything, you know, fix people when people don't want to be fixed. Like, you know, anything you consider a disability, but the person themselves want to consider a disability. Like, is, aut is autism a disability? Mm. Is dyslexia a disability? Many dyslexic people and autistic people would say, no, it's not a disability, but mm. people who don't have those would, you know, is, is deafism a disability? Mm. Some deaf people might say yes, but many deaf people say no, it's, it's, it's not a disability and I don't want to be fixed. Oh my gosh. Uh, any favorite social scientist? Um, oh, I have, I, have a, I have a few, but honestly, I don't really read social science at that much. Okay. I mentioned earlier the straws have generational theory. I like that, mm -hmm. but again, it's unscientific, but it's also unfalsifiable. Mm -hmm. But you can say that about anything mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, there's a lot of raises, you know, it's, um, uh, what's, what's that one? It's Newton's flaming laser sword, which states that if it cannot be determined by test or science or experimentation, then there's no point in discussing it. Which pretty much eliminates all philosophy. Mm. But yeah. Okay. How about uh, your favorite author? Favorite author. Mm. I don't have a th favorite author. The author that you liked then. Um, or you liked. Ryan North is pretty cool. Mm. I, there's, this, there's this book I have called How to Invent e uh, Everything. I use it for world building. Mm. Um, basically, the idea is that if you ever get stuck in the past, this is how you invent language. This is how you invent gunpowder. No, it's, it's a pretty fun book to read. Okay. Um, uh, Michael Kirkwright is cool, but he's really weird. He's the main author behind the Elder Scrolls series. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's weird about him? Uh, it's just... Well, if you know anything about the Elder Scrolls series, he's really weird. He okay. like, uses a lot of subjective language, like myself. Um, he tried to eliminate the concept of canon in his world. He says everything anyone says, every interpretation is canon. Which, in and of itself, is not a bad idea. I mean, that's what the SCP Foundation pretty much does. You know, it's a community thing, but there's still... And the only things that are hard canon are the SCP you know, reports and documents. You know, that's a way of doing it good. He does it poorly. He doesn't write it directly anymore, but he is still a major influence on the series. Uh, there's another author I like, but I always forget their names. What do you want? That's the thing. It's just, it's in my head. I, I just don't remember what it is. It'll, co it'll come to me in a second. What is, the, what is it about? That's the, that's the thing. I just, it's like, I know I'm forgetting one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh... No, I haven't read any Russian li literature. French? Actually. What about French? I mean, if you ask some people, they say Shakespeare or French, but... Oh, really? <laughs> well, some people say that, but no, he, he couldn't have been that, French. That's English. No, nah, he's English. He's English. Um, I think I've read uh, French poetry in the past, okay. but I can't, I can't cite, I can't cite it at the moment. I, you know, so, sometimes I just read things. I don't really look at the authors or anything. Mm. What, what about the Asians, the Japanese or Korean? I mean, yeah, I, I read, I read manga and stuff okay. like that and oh. some like novels. What mo novels have you read? Uh, Konosuba. Mm. Konosuba. Uh, Coming Can't Communicate. Mm. Just, you know, ba basic manga stuff. What, what, what manga do you like? Mainstream? Oh. Any mainstream? I, I like, I like Nichi Joe. That's, that's, that's my favorite. Okay. It's, oh, it's just a slice of life uh, manga anime. It's really mm. good. Mm. Just a lot of bizarre stuff. You either hate it or you, or you love it. Okay. And, you know, the, the, the people who like it, you know, they, you know, we genu genuinely, genuinely love it. Okay. Very uh, funny. So how, how often do you write? Oh, uh, so, sometimes I, I can't, you know, it's pretty much critical to my well-being. Sometimes, I, you know, I go to the library to work on assignments and do code, mm. but I just can't. I just feel like I have to do world building, mm. you know? Okay. I haven't written any concrete stories. I have a whole world and conflicts and, and people of interest and everything, but I haven't actually written like a whole story. I just have a lot of things set up. Okay. A lot of, yeah. Do you do journaling? Do I do what? Journal. 
journal? Uh, yeah, I, I write notes and things. Mm. Sometimes, you know, I have to write things, that, you know, about my feelings and ideas and stuff. Mm. Not really, I don't keep a journal per se. Okay. So you write your ideas down? Yeah, I write my ideas down constantly. Okay. 